Welcome everybody to another episode of the Nonprofit Show. We're thrilled that you are here. We're going to dig into something that's really a mystery for a lot of people, but it is one of the coolest philanthropic structures that we have in the U.S. People from around the world often look at the Community Foundation system and what it works. And we have somebody today coming to us uh, from my own community, Jill McElroy, philanthropic advisor for the Arizona Community Foundation. She's going to really dig in with us to find out why we need to know about this amazing structure and how you can really well, you know, build a good relationship and work well with a community foundation, with a community foundation. Easy for me to say, huh, John? <laughs> Hey everybody, I'm Julia Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. My trusty sidekick, Jarrett Ransom, is on an airplane heading home today from some work out of state, um, and she'll be joining us shortly. We are here because we have amazing partners. Most of them have been with us since day one. As we march towards 900 episodes, we're now in year four. We want to give a shout out to Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, your part-time controller, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Fundraising Academy, National University, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Nerd, and Nonprofit Tech Talk. These are the folks that are with us day in and day out. And part of that means they're part of our archive. And so if you want to access any of our previous episodes or maybe share one, you can download our sexy new app thanks to the american nonprofit academy team you can get us on streaming platforms as well as podcasts so basically wherever you are we will meet you there and connect you up with an amazing archive of guests and shows okay jill i've done my due diligence with leading everybody in you are a philanthropic advisor and i bet a lot of our viewers look at that title and they're like oh i need to know her but i'm afraid <laughs> and we're going to get into that but talk to us about your work and how did you what was your your journey to become this rarefied you know professional it is i'm very friendly uh <laughs> no, no fear needed um <laughs> all of my colleagues are very friendly so <laughs> yes but i do absolutely understand that it's intimidating because i was um my journey to the community foundation came from being a nonprofit fundraiser that is my um it's really uh scary for me to say that next month marks the 20th anniversary of my first job in a nonprofit role, which I mean, I know looking at me, you're like, you can't possibly uh, <laughs> be that age. Awesome. I am. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I um, came actually through the arts. Uh, I was a dancer. I was a dance major at Arizona mm -hmm. State University and realized um, really wanted to be help help the arts nonprofit community grow and thrive. So I started raising money for them and did all sorts of, you know, all the all the fundraiser hats, yeah. um, including grant writing. I was a grant writer uh, for quite a while. That was my role right before I came to ACF about two years ago. Wow. You know, I love this because you've been on the other side of the table. Yes. And that's really powerful. It's very valuable. But yeah, I just, that that makes this conversation um, that much more robust. Well, let's start off with this amazing structure called the Community Foundation and share with us kind of how it operates in the ecosystem with, with how it works because it's something that's very magical. <laughs> Yes, and can be quite complex and confusing. And as I said, Julia, when I came to ACF, I came with quite a lot of experience from the nonprofit side and from um, writing grants to ACF quite, quite often. And I really thought when I walked in on my first day, I really thought, I know what ACF does. And it took about 20 minutes <laughs> for me to quickly realize, no, you know 
know a portion of what ACF does, and it it really does so much more. Um, so community foundations in the U.S. started actually the first one started in Cleveland, the Cleveland Foundation, in 1907. So this is not by any means a new idea, and um, the Arizona Community Foundation was founded in 1978. So we are celebrating our 45th anniversary this year. Mm -hmm. um, what a community foundation is, is um, what sometimes surprises people is, uh, yes, it's community foundations are funders, but um, different from private foundations. And because of that word foundation, sometimes people get a little confused of how is a community foundation different? So a community foundation is its own 501c3, mm -hmm. own nonprofit, and um, but it, it's created for the purpose of having component funds. So it's made up of component funds, mm -hmm. um, all started typically by individual donors, families, um, also corporations, businesses can also start funds. We have um, the PECA Center for Business Philanthropy as well mm -hmm. at, at ACL. So are you in some way serving as a fiduciary um, for uh, for startups or are, are, are all of your, let me say partners, do they all have their own 501c3 status that's maintained? Or are you managing that? Give us a little bit more in-depth look at what that structure looks like. Because um, on your website, how many, I can't remember, how many organizations are you serving? Yes. So do you mean by funds? So yeah, over 2,000 two. funds. Yeah, 2,000. There's a lot. Amazing. <laughs> a lot. Amazing. Yes. And they're all different types of funds. So if um, anyone who's familiar with the Community Foundation has most likely heard the term donor advised funds, mm -hmm. that is the most common type of fund for sure. But there's also nonprofit funds. Uh, sometimes those are called just you know investment funds. So a nonprofit can um, put their endowment into a fund at ACF. It's invested uh, wisely, <laughs> and, yeah, and and yeah. But um, then you know they can then request. You know, okay, we need a distribution or set up an annual. There's there's all sorts of uh, choices. Um, ACF doesn't have too many, um, but community foundations can serve as fiscal sponsors. So for those organizations that are waiting for their 501c3 status to be approved by the IRS, they can't, you know, accept, um, they can't accept tax, deduct tax deductible <laughs> um, donations. ACF can do that for them and uh, then pass the money along to them. There are, of course, fees involved, but yes, that, 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 is a structure that that is possible so in the green room chatter uh you to told us that um you're running at about a billion three in managed funds that's right um what does that look like across the country i mean i mean to i mean the cleveland group <laughs> must be you know substantially different i would think <laughs> i mean what is give us Give us an idea of what this might look like. Sure. So Arizona Community Foundation with 1.3, 1.4 billion assets under management, we are in the top 25 um, oh, okay. largest community foundations in the country. Okay. But just to give you an idea of how different it is from the top. So Silicon Valley Community Foundation is the largest. That's no surprise to anyone, right? Oh. Um, they have about 13 billion in okay. assets under management. So it can be a pretty big range. And community foundations aren't always statewide. You know, Silicon Valley is, is a very particular geographic area. Um, typically community foundations serve no larger than a state, but sometimes county, sometimes metro area, sometimes a couple of counties altogether. It can be very, very different around the country. There are actually over 800 community foundations in the US and many, many more around the world. Um, if your listeners are in the United States and want to know well, what, where's my community foundation, they can um, go to the Council on Foundations, which is just cof.org. And find, um, there's a whole list of community, all of them. <laughs> you know, I love that you mentioned the Council on Foundations. They That's a terrific resource, a great website. Yes. And yeah, everybody should know about that. Um, just as a way to learn about 
best practices, things that are going on, um, things that the council and foundations, um, what they're concerned about, how they're training, how, you know, what they're advising and best practices. I find it's a, a great, great resource that yes. we that nonprofits need to look at, not just people, you know, in your side of the, the table. Um, so you talked about the structure of the um, the community foundation system, you know, just a little over a hundred years old, um, doing different things, but yet kind of using the same structure across the country. How do the community foundations make money and why do we need to know what this process is if we're a nonprofit? Sure. Uh, so community foundations uh, charge fees for service. And if a, a nonprofit is interested in using a, a community foundation to hold to hold a fund for them, they just understand, of course, there will be fees involved in that. Um, hopefully at ACF with any nonprofits that have funds with us, they really feel like they're getting quite a lot of bang for their buck. There's, um, I, I can of course tell you what ACF does. Each community foundation is gonna be different, but I, I think it would I would be hard pressed to find a community foundation that doesn't offer some type of service to the nonprofit um, field in their area. For instance, you know, ACF does quite a bit of training. Um, some of it's free, some of it's not. Mm -hmm. But um, my wonderful colleague, Kristen Mihalovic, offers uh, a planned giving series uh, in the spring and the fall, completely free over Zoom. So you don't have to be in Phoenix to, uh, to log in. We do have people coming from other states as well. Everyone's welcome, the more the merrier. And uh, she, it's, they're an hour and... Um, you're getting this information completely for free. And then there's other trainings that um, are, do, are fee-based as well. Do you find that most of the folks that come to you, and I'm not just talking about, you know, the, the funders and the folks starting foundations, but I'm going to address more the nonprofits. Do you think they're coming to you educated enough? Um, because I loved what you said, you know, you've been in the nonprofit sector for basically 18 years and you thought, I know this new job, new place, but I got this in like 20 minutes in, you're like, holy moly, I don't. So, you know, I, I guess my question is, if that happened to you, it's got to be pretty common. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. The When we publish, because of course we like to tell the community what we're doing, and so we have quarterly e-newsletters. I remember getting them from board members of the organizations where I worked for and saying, well, how do we get a slice of this? Why, you know, are we getting money from ACF? Look at these millions of dollars they're pouring out into the community. Look into this, right? <laughs> that, right. Was, that was a directive from my executive director from a board member. Like, we've got it. We've got to figure out, you know, how do I crack this nut? It's it, it's complex is, is um. The, the fair way to say it. A lot of those dollars that the community sees going out are donor directed. Right. So it's through those donor advised funds. It's through field of interest funds. It ACF in itself does not have a ton of discretionary funding. Other community foundations are in different spots because they're just, you know, in different summer, some community foundations are 100 years old, we're 45 years old, right? Yeah. So, um, but how, yeah, how do you, how do you do that when you're, when your board director says, how do we get a slice of this money? Um, ACF offers 35 competitive grant cycles. Um, I'm, mm -hmm. I would think that is very common throughout the community foundation world is you can um, apply for competitive grants. And then if your donors, your own donors in, in a nonprofit, your own donors, most likely some of them have donor advised funds. You may not know it. They may not right. realize that you can, you know, like, yes, you can give us a check. That's lovely. You can also advise a grant, um, recommend a grant from your donor advised fund. So it's educating nonprofits of just how that, how those funds really work mm -hmm. and, um, making sure the donors understand that, hey, yeah, you can just recommend a grant to us from your donor advice fund. And, and yeah. that that's the same. It's the same as writing a check yourself. You know, it's um, there's so much fear 
based uh, and interpretation when it comes to how am I going to get in front of these program officers? And, and what you just said, I think understanding how the system works is really the starting point to being confident and and knowing how to 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 do this. I can see your you know your board member or CEO throwing down that that piece of paper saying you know why aren't we on this? Sounds to me like they didn't know what the process was, sure. what the program officers do. Is there some way that we can just get in front of somebody and introduce <laughs> ourselves and not like say I'm doing this hard ask for this particular grant cycle, but just, you know, navigate a relationship or should we not do that and just go pro forma, you know, through that grant cycle process? No, um, we, we get a lot of that. So I will say it can sometimes be overwhelming. We cannot go on a site visit for every single nonprofit that wants us to come on a site visit. So I'll just, just you know, yes, we do have 70 plus staff, but you know, yeah, it would be really fun if my job was just going to visit nonprofits all day. That would be really fun. <laughs> I don't, I don't think my boss is going to uh, okay that one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, um, so yeah, it's, it's capacity, but um, yeah, email, phone, as I said, we're, we're not scary people. Many of us, and I and I think I can probably pretty confidently say with other community foundations around the state, or I'm sorry, around the country, that m most people gravitated gravit to this work typically have some type of nonprofit background. So we get it. We we do know because we've been in your shoes. Um, we the answer may not be yes in terms of coming for a site visit or saying, oh yes, we actually have this grant that we're that's just lying around and we don't know where to, where to send the money to. That, does, that doesn't happen. <laughs> There's far more uh, places to send money to than there are dollars to send, right. uh, of course. So yes, but email, phone call, um, we we have at, at least at ACF we have kind of a almost like a, a library um, a place in our shared drive where information that nonprofits send us gets put there and then a lot of times you know what I do is I work with donors mostly who have donor advice funds a few other types but mostly donor advice funds sure. and they'll sometimes ask and say I I'm really interested in this issue this problem. Right. Um, you know, this is my passion area. You know, I know about this organization and this organization. What am I missing? What else is going on in my city, in my county, in my state that's working towards this issue that I care about? And that's that's where a philanthropic advisor comes in and says, oh, yeah, let me do some research. Let me kind of introduce you to some more nonprofits that you know, fall in within your interest areas. And um, hopefully that leads to something. Not always, sometimes it doesn't, yeah. but sometimes it does. And I, I'll tell you a quick story, Julia. Um, I was meeting with a donor and the first thing he said to me when I sat down at Starbucks was, I have a hard stop um, at 11 because I have a guitar lesson. I said, oh, that's great. You're a musician, that's really cool. I had seen from his previous giving that he supported the arts and I was like, yay, because that's my background too. Love it, yeah. <laughs> And it wasn't until I was driving home that I said, wait a second, why didn't I tell him about this organization that, that offers really great music programs? I just didn't think of it. But when I got back to my computer, I wrote him a thank you. you know, so great to meet you. By the way, you might just be interested to know about this organization. They're, they're maybe you know similar to an organization that you've already funded, but here's how they're different. Mm -hmm. And... And he could have said, yeah, thanks, Jill, great, and done absolutely nothing with it. He researched them. He decided to recommend a grant from his donor advice fund. And now, over a year later, he's on their board. So oh that's really, that's what a philanthropic advisor does. But the donor also has to be open to it. Some, some donors just really don't, like, they know what they want to fund, They're, you know, and th that's it. And that's totally fine. And they're using the tool, you know. It, it's fine. But yeah. why we're here, why, why philanthropic advisors are here is to 
help and guide um, when donors need it. So Jill, let me ask a follow-up question because I love that you know you're you're linked to the arts world and and being literally on the other side of the desk doing that work. Um, is it a structure where you have experts like you have a, an advisor who's an expert in arts and culture, education, science, technology? I mean, because how can you be expected to know <laughs> everything that's going on? I mean, do you all do that, or is that a common practice? In some community foundations, it is a common practice where there are program officers that specialize in certain areas. ACF itself is not set up that way. We do have 70 employees. That, so kind of between us all, there are also, I should say, Julia, there are over 22,000 nonprofits registered just in the state of Arizona. There's yeah. no way we can, yeah. you're 70 people can yeah. know uh, you know, oh yeah, between, you know, all of us, we just divide and we have 5,000 nonprofits that, that just yeah. live in our heads. It can't, that can't be, but we have the tools to go out and, and really find um, what, what the donor or what some discretionary funding can, can really help with. And um, I will say that our community, our um, program officers are really focused in getting into rural Arizona so I, I mentioned um, in the green room chatter that we have five regional offices yeah. and staff that live in those communities. And then also our program officers that work out of central office, but they're always in the community uh, in, from ev every corner of the state. Amazing. Well, Jill, we don't have a lot of time left, but I guess, you know, the boil down is now that you've painted a picture that helps us to understand what the function is and how may we might you know engage in this relationship what is it that you and your donors are looking for what makes it as we like to say a happy marriage in this in this <laughs> relationship can you give us some advice on that sure well just like a, a happy marriage communication <laughs> oh <laughs> well, yeah the, the donors like um you know, just those really, really simple, you know, fundraising 101 things, and acknowledgement letters. Um, I will say we do get a lot of mail and some, you know, we do pass on acknowledgement letters to the donor. We typically don't pass on solicitations because they, they kind of know, they, <laughs> they get it. Um, and uh, so a strong relationship with us in terms of, I, I know I'm, I, in the past two years that I've been with ACF, I've met so many people and so many nonprofits that just you know, working, being focused in the arts field, I would have never met because they're they're working outside of that field and, and into areas that I just I just would not have stumbled upon otherwise. Um, yeah, so letting us know what what you're doing, what you need, and um, and then if you there is a donor that has a donor advice fund at, at ACF yeah just that communication you attending um ACF trainings attending um events just lets us it, it's that networking it's that you know yeah. build your, build up your network and and then we know and we oh I met that person was here last week in our office when we held this event they were telling me about you know, this anecdote this story this program and then who knows, a donor may call up the next week and say, Jill, tell me about this. And I'm like, oh, there's that connection. So, right. Well, it's such a journey because I think, um, you know, things happen in a donor's life. And sometimes it's emotional. Sometimes mm -hmm. it changes what they believe sure. they want to fund or they, they recognize that they can be a solution to something. Um, other times it's it's like a lifelong mission of one track. And then sometimes it's a change of circumstances. I've got to believe that you're witnessing this amazing transference of wealth that's going on that we're in the middle of in America. Uh, and so that people are, are probably funding differently because their assets have changed, right? Yeah, sometimes, and we're starting to see, yeah, the next gen of um, the donor who set up the donor advice fund or some other type of fund, if there is a successor advisor, we're now working with 
and the children, the grandchildren, the nieces, nephews, you know, whoever. And that's, that's really interesting. Um, learning, you know, educating maybe um, children who either were completely unaware of what their parents are doing, were aware of it, but were never really involved or, and now they're kind of stepping into that role. That, that is a really fun conversation most of the time. <laughs> well, I love most of the time. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a fascinating thing because we, we talk about this a lot. I mean, giving USA uh, reports on this every year, you mm -hmm. know, the demographic shift on what, you know, uh, different levels of Americans in terms of that demographics and break it down to age, um, what, you know, the older folks gave to and continue to give to and steward very different. Yes. As we go through from generation to generation. Yes, it can be. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, that can be pretty dicey to have some conversations. It can, it can. And a donor, if they are worried about that, of maybe they don't want to leave this philanthropy to their children. So most donors are really excited to do that. But just like you said, Julia, if they know that their children really support something else. things very differently than they do, they can always, they can give us um, instructions on what happens after their lifetime. And it doesn't necessarily have to roll down to another generation. The f a donor advised fund can convert uh, to a different type of fund, uh, something maybe called a designated fund that just lists you know, certain organizations, and they'll tell us you know give ten percent you know every year to to this organization that organization, and then it just that just can be set up you know kind of a set it and forget it type of yeah. thing, and then that's it. And then um, some donors just simply don't want to bother. They they think well I don't want to bother my children, my nieces, you know, the next generation, my neighbor, <laughs> my friend, whoever they're going to name, you know, like it, it, this is kind of my thing. And they're happy for the community foundation to continue it upon their instructions um, after their death. Yeah. It's such an amazing um, structure that supports philanthropy in many different ways. Um, I think it's fascinating to go onto different community foundations websites and look at some of their funds. And a lot of times they're incredibly humble people, you know, that a lifelong nurse or a lifelong teacher or something, and that they, you know, had a, a key to a solution they felt that they could, you know, navigate. And so really interesting jill mcelroy um philanthropic advisor with arizona community foundation which is exciting to have somebody from my own community um, on the nonprofit show talking to us more than 2,000 non uh, more than 2,000 community foundations in the u.s more than 800, 800. community foundations in the okay US. okay but okay. many and they exist in in uh, all over the world amazing Council on Foundations, um, Jill gave a really good uh, piece of advice there to take a look at where you might be able to create a relationship with somebody in your community or your region, looking at the cof.org and looking direct directly into what that opportunity might look like and who you can reach. You know, I love that you took away a lot of fear um, I love that you shared with us that you were on the other side of the table for the majority of your career and how people, your, you know, your cohort at work a lot are like you, that they came to this work from the nonprofit sector. Yes. And so um, I think it's, it's really you've kind of debunked a lot of myths that we might have had about the community foundation system. Thank you. Thank you so much. Jill. Well, I hope it did. Thank oh, you, Julia. This has been so fun. It's been really great. Again, I'm Julia Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. Jarrett Ransom, the nonprofit nerd, will be joining us shortly. Again, we are here because we have amazing, amazing partners, and I want to call them out. Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, your part-time controller, nonprofit thought leader, fundraising academy at National University, staffing boutique, nonprofit nerd, and nonprofit tech talk. These are the folks that join us day in and day out so that we can introduce you to people like Jill McElroy. 
Jill, it's been really a lot of fun. I, I'm, I'm super impressed with um, how the Community Foundation has grown, and I am very, very fortunate to uh, be have, having been witness to this in my lifetime, in my own community. It's really an amazing thing. So thank you for your service. Oh, thank you, Julia. Thank you for joining us. Hey, everybody, we sign off every show with this mantra, and I'll share it with you now. And it goes like this. Stay well so you can do well. We'll see you back here tomorrow, everyone. Thank you.